I'm trying not to scoot my chair every time I click play on the video, but I'll probably never succeed at that. Uh, so, uh, I mean, record on the video. Anyways, uh, another day of Touch IC Madness. Um, things have been going great. Everyone that I'm doing is going out of here with all the features working. I did bump into some stuff I thought I should talk about just briefly. I'm not going to talk about all the shit that can go wrong with this repair, but one thing that I'm running into, into pretty commonly, and it's probably because of where I'm holding my hot air. So, anyways, I'm going to switch over here to screen capture so you can see what I'm looking at. I've got some new Microsoft hardware coming that's going to help me show you a little bit better uh, directly what I'm working on, but right now I don't have that. So I'm not going to show you any real world stuff here. This is just going to be schematics. Uh, so anyway, I have open here the iPhone 6 Plus board. Um, this is top side. I'm going to flip this over to um, flip this over to bottom side. And what what I ran into here is that I'm coming in with my hot air over the top of the audio IC. And I think I may be pointing it a little low and getting this area here uh, somewhat too hot. Uh, what I'm running into on some of these is um, everything works except for the ear speaker. And I wanted to share what I've been doing to fix that. I don't really agree with um, like refloating an entire area for anything in this repair to fix it. Um, you know, I, I, I've tried some of those methods and almost any time I just refloat an entire area, bad shit happens. So. Um, what I strongly suggest on this repair is if you have things that aren't working after you replace the touch IC to, um, to, to, to use your brain and the schematics and compare what you see on the schematics with the direction of your hot air and then try to use that to narrow directly down to what it is that is not working. See, this string of components here, I'm going to switch back over to screen capture. Um, this string of components here... So, J1111, um, this is your connector that's got your front-facing camera, proximity sensor, ambient light sensor, it's got microphone in it, and it's also got a pathway for the ear speaker. And, um, you know, there's the, the Mason Touch I see is actually directly on the other side of the board from the string of components here that's alongside that connector. Now, these components, they're all covered in this rubbery overfill, and it's not too bad to remove, but it's a pain in the ass to get it out from between those components without actually popping those components off of the board. And then you got to fix that too. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I thought I had Blackfish opened up here. I'm going to go ahead and open up um, open up a schematic of this board. This video is probably turning into a ridiculous long video. I wasn't planning on going into all this, but what are you going to do? Um, so anyway, I've been winding up with no ear speaker on a few of these and no proximity sensor on some of them once in a while and once in a while no front facing camera and um, each one's kind of got its own little fix. Um, this video here I'm only going to touch on ear speaker. I'm going to keep it short. Really my reason for doing this is to emphasize that you really should use your head and narrow down what it is that's lost connection. Um, that's a much better way to go about getting this fixed. Okay, let's see if my monitor is running 1920 by something, but Open Broadcaster is only capturing 720p over here, so I got to size the size the window down to fit. Um, so let's open up an iPhone 6 Plus here and see if the software will crash when it opens. Usually it does. Probably need to upgrade it. I got a little message about upgrading this software, but um, I don't speak Chinese, so it's making it difficult for me to decide. Okay, so let's, um, we're going to flip over, and what was that, J1111, right? Yeah, J1111, so let's jump down to that connector. My search box always opens off the screen, too, so I have to do Alt-M, or Alt-Space to bring up the little box at the top left, and then M to select Move, and then I use the arrow keys to pull it back down on the screen. Look at that. All right, so J1111. This should take us... All right. So here's our connector. Now you could probably do this all just through the ZXW tool. I'm just doing it like this because I'm making a video and I want to try to look smarter. Uh, <laughs> um, so anyway, these bottom pins here you can see front mic to Kodak. 
N, which is probably going to be negative, front mic to codec P, positive. You know, I don't know if that's negative or positive. I would assume anode or cathode, but maybe they're doing negative and positive. Who knows? Well, you know, with a microphone, you don't really have a negative and positive because a microphone puts out alternating current, and then that gets translated back into sound on the other end. So, um, anyways, if you look at this connector, um, this is actually upside down. And if you look at the board and identify where your ground points are, um, you can pretty easily pinpoint uh, down to where some of this stuff is. So codec to receiver connector, codec to receiver connector, uh, receiver, I'm pretty sure that's the ear speaker, I'm not 100% sure, um, but codec to HAC connector, NNP, pretty sure that's also ear speaker. So if you look at everything else on the list here, there is nothing here that would make you think ear speaker except for HAC and RCVR, the receiver speaker from like old telephones. So um, the first time I ran into this issue, this is the way I narrowed it down. I looked on here and I'm like, okay, well, where's all this stuff at? So then I switched back over to the board view and I started clicking on these pins and seeing what these are. So down here, when you start clicking on these pins, codec to receiver connector P and codec to, codec to receiver connector N. No, I don't actually say receiver or connector. You just got to think a little bit. So anyway, it's pretty clear that this connector is upside down compared to this connector, but you can narrow down which components it is here that are going to hit on the ear speaker by reading these acronyms and what these are. So as you can see, as I click these pins, the components down here are being highlighted because that's where these connections go. Um, this one's for front cam. It looks like PP, that's gonna be power. So yeah, anyways, I wound up narrowing it down to basically everything below DZ1117 over here, this group of components here. So now instead of like picking the crap off of these and then refloating the entire area, I'm worried about what would happen to the rest of this shit here, which, you know, you got proximity sensor mixed in here, ambient light sensor, camera. Well, I don't know if cameras there. I know these are display chokes over here for the camera. Um, but anyways, as you run into problems after replacing these ICs, as long as you use the schematics, um, board view, and you could probably even do it without the schematics. I mean, if you plug in a speaker flex and sit there with a multimeter and diode mode or continuity mode with a uh, beep turned on and sit there and beep test the thing out, you can figure this out. It's just going to take you forever and you're going to have to pick all the rubber off the board, which sucks because you're sitting there picking rubber off and you accidentally pop a component off. Well, there's something else you got to fix on top of your fucked up ear speaker. So this is the way I do it. I got a phone, doesn't have working ear speaker. I narrow down on the schematics which area of the board, which components are actually responsible for that ear speaker. I compare that with where my hot air was to develop an idea of what is most likely, what most likely got messed up. And what I wind up doing is I pick the rubber coating off of just this group here very carefully. I flex those components and then I take my micro pencil, which is hanging down here because it was hot when I unhooked it um, and I don't want it to bump anything. Anyway, so then I take my micro pencil and I, I lightly push down on each one of these components with tweezers and I solder both ends. And I do that to each component. I mean, sure, it, it, it could look like a lot, but I mean, look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine components. It takes me, it takes me like five minutes to pick all that rubber coating off of it. And then it takes me 30 seconds to resolder all nine of those components and fix the ear speaker. So that's all I'm going to go into on this video. There's other stuff. I mean, um, you got a little guy up here for proximity sensor. Some of these mixed in here are proximity sensor, but you don't really need to get into all that if the proximity sensor is working. And you don't really need to pick the, un the, uh, the rubber coating off of all of this if your ear speaker is not working and it's down here. So if you were to pick the rubber coating off of this, flux it, and attempt just to refloat this area with hot air, what is going to happen to all of this if it's still got that rubber coating on it? You're going to wind up with other stuff messed up, probably. So that's why I choose just in this one area here, pick the rubber coating off, solder those components by hand, fix the ear speaker, and don't break anything else. So I've had to do this to uh, two of them today, and I did 
Dude, <laughs> I don't know, five of them? How many did I do yesterday? I, I'm not sure. This is getting to be um, like a pretty big part of the day. I'm having to send screen replacements elsewhere. Uh, we've been turning away laptops, turning away a lot of other stuff. And, um, you know, it's this is really a, a really big uptick in repairs. So uh, if you're out there and you're doing this as a repair, uh, one thing that, that I've realized is that you have to be really careful about just how much of your business and how much of your structure that you change to deal with this aspect of repairs, to deal with this specific repair. Because what's going to happen if tomorrow Apple does issue an extended warranty and all of a sudden all of these, who knows how many, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? Uh, you know, what I think is that your defect rate when you're sending these out, like without the future shield, however many of them come back, that's probably the percentage of iPhone 6 Pluses that have this problem out there. I mean, I might be wrong, but just saying. Um, I'm really bad about losing my train of thought with this. Okay, so anyways, if you're dedicating such a large part of your business to this repair and then all of a sudden you get up tomorrow and Apple's fixing it for free and you've done shut down entire departments of your repair business so that you have your hands free to deal with this, what are you going to do? You're going to be in trouble. So uh, that's one other thought that I, that I had about this. And um, it's, it's, it's something to take seriously because now there's getting to be a lot of publicity drawn to this. And much like Error 53... Air 53 was fixed pretty quick, but that was just a software update. I have no idea what they're going to do with this crap. But um, anyways, I just really wanted to talk about um, one of the secondary defects that, I, that I've been running into today. I've ran into it twice, and I ran into this other days, but today I actually ran into it twice, and it's like, okay, this is probably where I'm holding my hot air. Um, but anyways, fix the phone. Customers are happy. Um, maybe you learned something from this, maybe you didn't, but if you are doing this repair, I just, I can't stress enough how important it is to narrow down whatever it is that's not working through diagnostic measurements or just simply finding it on the board view and resoldering it anyway, because these speaker components, these, uh, I know there, there's some filters and stuff here, um, they're not visibly detached. You can push on them, you, you, you can nudge them and do whatever it is that you want to do, and I haven't found a way that you can look at it and tell that it's not making a connection. You can use a multimeter and, and, and you know, beep them out and check for continuity on other places of the board and figure it out that way, but I think that would take longer than just narrowing down this little cluster of components that's most likely the culprit and just resolder them all and call it a day. So that's it for this video. I don't know if you learned anything or not. Um, I feel better having got that out there. I feel like there's a lot of people that are probably just replacing chips and don't really deal with anything that happens after the fact. Like the eBay botched repair of repairs. I've seen more than just the one that did on the video, but um, that one on the video was pretty bad where it looks like they pulled the chip off, they had torn pads, they panicked, stuck the chips back on the board with no so no balls. They just they probably stuck the original chips back on the board, just swiped it off clean with, a, with an iron and dropped them back on there because they don't do anything other than replace the chips. That means they sure in the hell are not going to fix your front camera if it has a problem after they fixed your phone. So um, that's also something to think about if you're not doing this repair. If you're watching this video thinking about whether or not you should send it to me, um, that's something to think about. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching, everybody.